Hello everybody, how you're all doing? Uh, hope you're having a wonderful day. I've got a bit of a headache. Uh, I was thinking, oh, I, I, I think I might play a game because you know, this headache's kind of starting to bother me. And then about four minutes before the stream started, I realized, no, I want to do dev, you know, dev, you know, mod, you know, I want to do arc modding. That's what I want to do. I'm hoping I can get rid of this headache. I've got some caffeine with me. I don't like doing the cans because high fructose corn syrup, but I think I need the caffeine more than, you know, I'm going to survive with the, uh, the high fructose. I mean, I prefer it in bottles. Coke from bottles, fantastic, especially when it's made with real sugar, which is pretty much all of them. Oh, that, that's all good. So yeah, we're going to do some uh, arc development. I am waiting for the developer to load. And uh, if I, uh, you know, whatcha? What just happened? That's not right. That That's not right at all. <laughs> One moment. I mean, the developer should... The, 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 the thing's still loading. I have a moment to fix this. Okay, where's my transition table? Alright. Move, that's the default, so that moved. But that cut. Huh. Weird. So, oh, it was just a timing thing, huh? Okay, if I remove that from the transition table, does it still do that, though? Okay, I don't know what it was, but it was just a little something weird. I just happened to be looking over like, wait, what? <laughs> All right, so we are going to load into Arc as soon as it finishes loading. Yeah. Errors upon errors upon errors, as you can see. Yeah, I have no idea why the, you know, they released this with so many errors. As most of it's, you know, can't find files, so. So we're just kind of waiting for that to finish up. Uh, in terms of what I want to work on today, yeah, you know, we got the doors pretty much uh, working. So, oh, ah, I was hoping that would work on volume, but I guess not. There you go. Uh, we got the doors working. I want to double check. I want to make sure that the double doors work. Uh, ooh, I just had a thought. I might want to. Do 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 do. Let me make sure that uh, I'm actually on the right server. Okay. Do I have anything pending? No, it does not look that way. Okay, good. So everything got committed. So, yeah, <laughs> we're not going to lose anything if anything weird happens. All right, we're all loaded up. I want to double check, make sure that the, uh, you know, we, I know the doors work. I don't think that we ran into any issues with them. But, you know, it'll be easier if we uh, do a test. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think of the best way to test this. I mean, I could just, you know, load up all the doors and then just, you know, put, you know, door frames in each one and make sure that all works. I mean, you know, that wouldn't be terribly terrible, but it wouldn't exactly be easy either. It's like... Mm. I want to be able to give myself, like, you know, 
make like one command that gives me everything I need and be able to change that command. Even better is if I could, you know, figure out what the initial starting items are. I mean, if I come in here and press start and then press F1, you know, it gives me dedicated storage. It's like, can can I make it that, you know, these things that it gives me just straight off the bat are different? That would be kind of the ideal solution. I suppose what I might be able to do, though... Um... Ooh. Metadata's for hairstyles. Interesting. Alright, status values. That's alright. Dates. Standard item definitions. Master item list. I mean, that's where we've been making our changes. Additional engrams, that's how we add new things. Spawn regions. Tutorial UI sound. Um, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just looking through here, seeing, you know. Sound applies level up. Level down. A lot of sound. Adam app IDs. Core app IDs. Let's see what's in here. Oh, this is like. Wait, what? It's gonna tell game test. What? What is this? Okay, I think these are. Uh... Oh, okay. All right, tooltip widget generic. Starter note item. Dropped item. I'm looking for something that would be like the startup character or set. Dino entries, color definitions, extra resources. So if you needed to add like your own resource, you could. Uh, the default game mode. You know, maybe what I need's in here. Um, because this kind of feels like where, you know, you'd put stuff. The game mode. Uh, disable dynamic music, disable XP. <laughs> yeah, let's disable XP for right now. NPC, tame dinos. Actually, no. Let's not do that. Uh, per stats, mutagens, item stack clamps, steam discount code, bonus supply crate. What? Okay. <laughs> Primal bonus. Bonus supply crate class. What's this? Hide item description. Copy. It's an artifact. Mysterious Snow Globe. Okay, I think this is not it. Stat modifiers, no. Default Pawn Class. Ta pawn Test. Let's open this see what's in here. Space human. Turn nodes. Set up meshes. Current position, last position, pivot position. 
Okay, that's all hair. Ascension missions. Okay, physics, collision, animations, camera, here we are. Character stats, great sounds. Is female. Oh, I can turn that on. Human drink montage. Interesting they made that a choice. I mean, I suppose if you're uh, testing things, it makes sense. Item catch the cash. Animation for vent poop cue. <laughs> oh, so you can change to the poop sound. I'm not sure I'd want to know that. <laughs> Use VP get. Okay. Surprised they don't just like have a list of items that you default start with. Ah, inventory. Default weapon, weapon fists. Weapon map, weapon GPS. Put materials. of options here. Um, okay, I don't think it's that. Player class controller. Player controller blueprint. This feels like it might be what we need, but I don't know. Basically, I'm hoping to look, I'm hoping to find a, okay, I did not find it. All right. I'm hoping to look for a, uh, like some sort of uh, list or something. Creative mode buff? Maybe that's it. Unfortunately, I'm currently building the graph. Half the wait. <laughs> oh, got a Discord message. Same what? By the way, uh, Kira's hosting her ARC servers. I'm hoping one day to get these uh, mods on there. I'm hoping that... This has taken a long time to build this class hierarchy. But yeah, I'm hoping one day to get these mods onto there. Uh, buff creative mode helper. That just feels like it could be it. Yeah, this is a crazy little side tangent we're getting on. We gotta get to the doors, and we're going to. Now that we actually have, you know, doors working, we need to make sure that all the doors work. After that, we're going to be working on uh, making sure that the... Oh, wrong button. After that, we're going to make sure that the, uh, you know, all the doors work. That all the doors are actually interchangeable. I don't know why I can't swap doors. You know, I should be able to just... Bloop, bash, doors, but... Maybe you can't do that in the game? 
I'm pretty certain you can. I don't know why I can't seem to do it. I'll probably have to bring in some some uh, vanilla and see if uh, they can do it. They should. I don't see any reason why they wouldn't. But uh, if so, that's something we got to fix. Oh, finally. All right, let's see. Can deploy. Can Let's see. What do we got? Okay, yeah, I'm not seeing anything there. Let's see what buff mode creative helper looks like. Expose parameter, reset parameter. Oh, it's a, an emitter. Uh, weapon admin blink rifle. Alrighty. Add character values. Values to add per second. Buff descriptor. I, I don't even know if that's what we're... Is this even what we're dealing with? I'm not sure if it is. Yeah, I'm not seeing any sort of buff there. Alright. So... Shooter HUD blueprint. Oh, sorry guys. So, Shooter HUD blueprint. Hurt camera shake. Generic gamepad replacements for keyboards, controls. Interests, points of interest container widget blueprint, HUD active mission, HUD custom display status, player HUD new, survivor profile UI. Hmm. Inventory menu 2. Noticing these are all different. No, that's just the 2.0. Ah, closed it. Um, okay. HUD status, HUD player new. Oh, that, that's looking right. Okay, there's the dinos. There's us. There's the controls that are actually set up for Xbox. Lines of text. Alright, let's see. Left side anchor. Player name. Current level. Temperature. Yep, okay, that's alright. Extra. Extra progress? <laughs> oh. Okay. Alright. Item slot. Extra text layover. Anchor top, right slide. Secondary status. Console. Well, let's see if I can... Element, primary status, gamepad quick buttons, ah. that's the 
secondary status. Hmm. So what's this other one over here? Can I even... Uh, it doesn't look like I can. Okay. Alright. So this is the mode that they have us use. I didn't change anything, so... Spectator Controller Blueprint. Shooter HUD Bleep P. Player Pawn Test. I feel like that might be, you know, what we need. Because, you know, if what we need is not actually in here, then it should be connected to here. Net preload. Preload ascension. Net client ascend. Client HUD showed no no notification. Uh hmm. All right. Where the heck is Ved begin play? Oh, it's just that hidden right there, huh? All right, so player server or client switch here. Set up new hairstyles, then set up the meshes. Otherwise, do a, a one second delay and then multicast player hexagon count. Okay. Um, uh, show HUD notifications. Player command. You know what? Why am I doing all this craziness? There's an easier way of doing it. No, not world settings. I need project settings. Editor preferences? Oh, they might have disabled it. I wanted to see the inputs. Alright. My override is going to the, my primal data. Let's see, editor preferences. Okay, so they're not letting me get at the uh, at the inputs. Which makes me wonder. Server send. Construction script, nothing. Um, override camera interpreter full speed. Set first person hand meshes, all explorers. There's gotta be a way to override their, uh, their defaults. Alright, what's modified? Pawn mesh. Collision spine.
Here's all the animations. Camera, player pawns, status sounds. Throw characters, cuddle animation. Uh, I either need something that's going to directly send me over to, you know, something that will manage all everything, or I need something that's actually going to uh, directly, you know, give me the information I need. Somewhere is a list of all the items that go in all the slots. And I think it should be in this file, but... Just because I think it should be in this file doesn't mean it is. Alright, uh, what about inventory? In... Then... Viewing information animation. Death, destruction, play, inventory class. Uh, does not have to be modified. Let's say that. Although that might help. Death cash. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, let's say it is modified. Alright. This weapon. Harvest, break, uh, hold a bunch of animations. Weapon itself. <laughs> weapon. Shooter weapon melee. Yeah, it's not going to be in here. I'm honestly surprised it's not in here. But, here's the thing. There's only two places it could be. The player controller and the player pawn. And the player, you know, controller looks like it doesn't have a whole lot. Can deploy. Oh, this is taking a bit to load. Alright, can fit. Interesting that they're using, you know, logic for this. Or blueprint logic. All right, can deploy. No, that's not going to have it. Uh, what just happened? All right. Steam Inventory Pop-Up UI. Alright, let's switch this up to Only Modified. Buff Creative Mode Helper. I mean, that sounds like it could be it, but... It doesn't let me do anything. Camera Player Blueprint. Alright. Come back here to Test Mode. Let's show Only Modified. Oh, seriously? I haven't modified anything? Very certain I have. <laughs> um, game state class. Uh, pawn test. That just... That feels like it's where it is. Alright, what happens if I put it to another pawn? Seriously, that's all we have for player pawns? Um, 
Interesting that they have a child blueprint, actually. What does that look like? It looks like the man. So... Uh, this is probably never going to work, so... Let's just skip that for now. I'm, I'm, I'm done looking for that. We've already spent half an hour trying to figure it out. Uh, what's the difference? I don't think there is a difference. All right, revert. Um, there used to be a function called, oh, well, there is later a refunction, reload. All right, I'm just gonna come in here and set all the uh, structures and make it my own. Yay! Okay. Item master list. Alright. So we have the foundations. Alright, so first things first, we need a thatched door frame. Followed by a thatched door. Wrong button. Next up is wood. Which door frame? And door. Next up is stone. It was actually in the right spot, actually. <laughs> Alright, so now metal. Or is it greenhouse and then metal? Uh, let's check greenhouse. Then metal. Trying to duplicate and then accidentally deleted. Okay, metal. Metal door frame. Metal door. Oh, you know what? After wood, before stone, comes adobe. Now we're going to do the regular doors first, and afterwards we'll work on uh, double doors. I want to make sure the doors themselves actually work. Okay. God damn it. Fortunately, that was a duplicate. All right. Um, uh, greenhouse. All right. Then tech. All right, so tech door frame and then tech doors. All right, save that. Yes, we'll check it out. I want to be able to replace all of this junk with stuff I would actually use. Or the stuff I'm actually testing. <laughs> also be nice if it didn't lag every so often. Alright. 
So. Need ten of those. And then... 500. 501. 2. 3. Oops. 4. 5. 6. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and finally thirteen. There we go. So we're going to put the foundations down, uh, split stack in half, toss those out. Alright, let's start working our way through. A good starting point and all right that works Adobe, your problem more than likely is that it's not uh, it's not set to uh, oh I grabbed the wrong thing um, Adobe wall doorway there we are more than likely I just forgot to uh, tell it uh, hey no only the you know <laughs> yeah it's trying to consume something it doesn't have I'm going to guess the door is doing the same thing, though. Yes, check out. Yep, the door is going to be the same way. Yes. Oh, door's not uh, connecting. And I can't connect wood. Alright, well, let's uh, move on with the door frames. So the Adobe one <laughs> won't connect to that, but it will connect to this one. I feel we can safely, you know, eliminate that from the uh, listing. Same with wood. I think we'll come back to uh, that. But. All right. So. Greenhouse doors aren't too, are doing having the same issue. Oh, wrong thing. Did it again. All right, so it's finding the right thing, but then it's trying to consume something different, which is why it's having the problem. 
All right, greenhouse stores is fine. And you'll need to be checked out. Yep. All right, so. Oh, good. That works. And I want another one for testing. Let's see, okay, good. Can't accept that. Can't accept that. Can't accept that. But you can accept those. All right. What's up with the adobe door? And let's just make sure that all the other doors... Alright, they don't connect. Good. Good. Alright. Let's make sure that this door does not... And I was waiting to connect next door, but not to here. That's good. That's correct. Now let's pick up these doors. And let's make sure that... Uh-oh. Uh <laughs> not what I wanted to do, but yeah, this is why we have extras. <laughs> Okay, yep, won't connect, will connect, will connect, will connect, will not connect, will connect, perfect. Alright, let's check wood. Now it looks like the, uh... <laughs> Alright, will, will, will not, will, 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 will not, will, perfect. And now this guy will, will. Yeah, that's not bad. It's a weird look, but it works. Hey, Deedway, how you doing? Oh, I think that Coke was just like right what I needed. Don't have that headache anymore. Now confirm that all the doors work with the exception of the Adobe. And the Adobe will connect to everything except the door Adobe tape one. And the tech, which it shouldn't. Okay, so definitely gonna have to make some changes to the Adobe door. And which might lead way to changes to the Adobe walls. I'm really, really not liking how thin a door that is, and I can see through it. Hmm. All right, so probably the first thing to do is figure out why the Adobe door is not working. All right. So, what's modified here? Um, 
Collision presets. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Um, apparently they use the rock set up for that. All right, so what's the components look like? Um, this looks just like Adobe to me. Yeah, this looks like every single other door I have. Why is it not working? Maybe it, there's something wrong with the door? Now, one of the things I did was I actually, you know, how they did Adobe was really messed up. So I basically corrected that in terms of, you know, parentage and all that. But for some reason, why is this not working? Pickup gives item. All right. Structure broken. Yes. Yes. This all looks fine. Is there something in the blueprint then? Oh, that might be. There might be something in the item structure that's preventing it. All right. Let's check the door frame first. Um, loud structure to build. Boulder pass. No, that's all right. And I'm guessing that this is pretty much going to be the same thing. Yeah. So, what's causing the problem here? Structure sets, collisions. <sighs> Broken by metal DLC one. Placement by structure walls, yes. Prevent placements, yes. Snap to structures to exclude. Okay, yeah, you can't snap to the floor, I guess. <laughs> um, item structure, Adobe door, door frame, yes. Use world space normal, yes. <laughs> Um, I feel like it might be something in the door. Because a lot more of stuff is actually going to be here than anywhere else. Structure based door. Yeah. This is the Adobe door. Also uses the world space normals. Snap structure class. I don't get what's different. Nothing should be different. All right, so Adobe door frame, and let's see the greenhouse door frame. Oh, I can't compare against each other. Oh, right there, diff selected. Defaults. Greenhouse door frame. Okay, yeah. Can I have. Okay. Oh, next. There we go. Ignore dying when demolish? What?
decay destruction period. That's fine. Allow structured color sets, yeah. Snap two types. What? what, what? Oh, am I missing an exclude of some kind? I'm going to actually turn off that. And let's see. Where's the metal? There you are. Let's diff these two. That's fine. F7, huh? Which one's this? This is the Adobe. <laughs> All right. That's actually fine. That's good. That's good. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, this raises even more questions. Alright, first of all, I just told it to find something. It found something, but it's not highlighting what it is. of these have the snap from item structures. Alright, what about stone? I I've actually spent time with stone, so. Alright, defaults. Okay, it looks like we don't have the snaps here, but for some reason the other one does? The greenhouse door frame has an exclusion. Well, first of all, the name needs to change. Let's come in here. All right. KJ Adobe frame. Door frame. There we go. It won't let me uh, get at it anymore. All right. Um, let's unmodify. I want to see what these uh, the snap stuff is here. Snap points. Okay, so it's excluding the fence foundations. Interesting. At least there. It's also excluding the floor base. That feels like something I should be excluding, you know, by default. I, 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 I am excluding it by default. What the hell?
All right. So, yeah. Snap structures, floor base. Let's add the KJ base floor. KJ. Uh, base KJ foundation. If I, I don't, yeah. Uh, structure base. Here we are. Foundation. And we'll skip out on foundation try. JJ structure. Structure base foundation. Actually, no. Foundation uh, try is based on foundation, so I don't need that. I can just do that. Yes, check it out. Check it out! Alright, so if I come back here... frame, pick up the door frame. I guess we're just picking up this. I, for some reason, I can't access these. I think I'm just going to have to close this. Alright, check out the files. Yes. Okay. Let's uh, make sure the rest of the adobes all get renamed. Open. Full editor. Interesting, I can just choose that or a little bit. Hmm. Yeah, I have no clue why it's uh, being problematic. I might. <laughs> but, you know, that that's a ways away. Uh, you know, maybe if I need, like, a uh, some sort of manager, I'll put, like, logo in there, but also put a glim drop on there. Yeah, with the, the, the stream link. Uh, I probably should not have opened all of these at once. But it's how I'm going to not mess any of them. I think it's just weird that they put the name in two locations. One, but you know, it, they're also using it as two separate uh, uh, instances. They're, you know, you have the the ideological item, which is the one that's in your inventory and that you kind of focus on when you try to place it down. Then there's the actual item in the world that you place down. So I understand why, you know, they do it the way they did. Ah, there we go. I have all of them open up now. So show modified. KJ reinforced Adobe window. Hmm. Uh, you can get the, the, uh, the thing just by opening up, uh, uh, the Unreal, uh, uh, you can get the Arc Editor from the Unreal Engine Epic Games Launcher. Uh, f let me, uh, just get over there. Let's see, library. Here we are. It's loading up now. Uh, in here, after you, you know, you can actually get the Arc Editor. You don't even need to own Arc, technically speaking, but... Uh, you come here, you have the ARC editor, you install it, and keep in mind, 
it's big. Uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, once you uh, get the arc editor, you can come in here and basically you're making, you can do anything you want to make your own arc mod. You know, anything you can use this you know, Unreal Engine for. Keep in mind, though, this is based on Unreal Engine 4.5.1 with some tweaks. So, yikes. <laughs> this is old. I mean, you guys have been, you've seen me use Unreal Engine 4.2 something for quite a while. Like, you know, like 26 and 27 are the best and last ones they'll ever be for the 4 series. Uh, those have come far and away from where this is now. And then 5 is a whole generation beyond this. This is just cringeworthy in age. And they're not updating the system because they're not making any money on Ark, which is why they're working on, uh, you know, the new Ark. But, I, you know, they're probably still making tons of money on Ark. But this particular editor has been streamlined to the point where it's mainly for the developing Ark de games. Uh, I'm trying to figure out, you know, the, the best way I can how to set things up the way I want well, hopefully I'll be able to transfer some of these over to the ARC 2 dev kit whenever that comes out. Because this is a mod I would like to take over to ARC 2. But, uh, yeah, we'll have to see what, what happens with ARC 2. I mean, a lot of the functionality they have, they're not going to have all of it, uh, may already be there. Yes, check that out. Close. Uh, compile, <laughs> save, check that out, yeah, you know what, let me just, uh, oh, oh, I don't want to grab all of them, I want to grab all of them, there we go, uh, check out, there we go, now I don't have, now I won't get that little message, uh, I, I am going to have to go through here and test all of these, you know, land, th all, all of these parts eventually. But for right now, I just want to get the doors working. <laughs> After doors, we'll get double doors. After double doors, we'll get gates. And then we'll start working on other aspects of the, uh, of everything. We'll check out ramps and might, uh, go in and actually start making some new assets. In which case I'm going to try to pull out, uh, as much of the, uh, relative assets as I can. So I can actually make new stuff. Like, it would be nice to make stairs. Like, decent stairs. It'd be nice to make, you know alternate pillars or and all sorts of other things but you know then there's also you know how much of this do i actually want to uh build i mean i don't want to go through and remodel literally everything Uh, also be nice if I could write like a, a script for all this. Like, select these assets. <laughs> what do you want to do? Find a descriptive name. <laughs> Search the first, you know, three letters. If KJ appears in them, yeah. Then, uh, then skip. If not, <laughs> append. <laughs> Oddly enough, in the newer Unreal Engine, I probably could do that. It's a lot of work to get through all this stuff, make sure it works. But once I do, it's pretty much fire and forget. I don't have to worry about it ever again unless some sort of functionality breaks. And hopefully I'm doing you know, enough behind the scenes work that 
I don't need to go back and, you know, remaster everything just to make it work again. why the base you know ceiling hatch door is using adobe in the descriptive name but okay actually can i take a quick look at that yeah let's just do <laughs> yes we'll check out that too all right that one's good to deal with renaming these Adobe ones again. I might, I might still have to. We'll find out. <laughs> but it should just work. Alright. So that's the that. Now we're getting into other items. just gets these ones too just so I don't forget about them JJ doorframe yes please and that's the primal data I'll leave that in its own window because we may be coming back to that all right Adobe is all set let's save everything Yes, save it all. Check it out. Oh, you know, I, I forgot to look at some of the rest of your, your question. Uh, can we use these assets? Absolutely. You know, the arc modding situation, you know, it's, it's simple. You can take their dinosaurs, put them in here, make a giant version, and then you can you release it as a mod. I mean, you're you're more than likely not going to get any you know substantive money out of it. You're not selling the mods, but you can have Patreons and uh, all sorts of uh, ways, you know, donation locations, so that you can actually get some funding to help you uh, do this. But this isn't your main job. I mean, you pretty much have to work for the uh, you know the, the current developers in order to get you know paid to do this you know legitimately. But for modding, you know, Patreon is probably the best you can do. Maybe, you know, stream donations, stuff like that. All right. Hopefully, I doubt it, but hopefully that will have fixed some of the concerns. Let's come over here. Drop all this junk. Drop all this junk. I want to be able to specify my own inventories. I don't know where they have this set up. I definitely got to figure out where, you know, where and how to set up one up myself. All right. All right. So that was that one. Let's see. I also need the Adobe stuff, which is 504. Five oh five. Yeah, <laughs> that's basically the base game. They give you basically all the assets. All 
I mean, you can open up, uh, you know, a lot of their, uh, you know, a lot of their islands and stuff uh, to see how they're made. Yeah, you know, basically anything that, uh, you know, anything that comes free with the game, like any expanded uh, maps or anything, are included with the the mod editor. Right now, uh, with all the uh, DLCs and everything, uh, my download for ARC is 400 gigs. And that's like how much free space you need on, the, on your hard drive. dynamic that's accurate door placement item structure pickup gives yes I feel like there's something simple that I'm just missing that I did with the others but Close that. Ignore dying when demolished. Decay destruction period. This greenhouse is a little weird. Oddly enough, uh, in the original uh, assets, uh, the adobe is based on the metal frame. So if I compare these two, okay, this could be the issue. Yeah, we have a static you know mesh here, but then we have uh, another static mesh here. They're both going to the same door frame. I think there was something in the graph somewhere. Or something that has to do with static mesh. I'm going to try removing that. Oh, I got to end things. Um, copy, paste, let's make that visible, object layer one. I don't know what an object layer is. That's weird. All right. All right. And now, copy, paste the scale. Now, delete the static mesh. All explodes. There we go. <laughs> yeah, they they did a lot of funky stuff with this, so 
Alright. Guessing this was likely the uh, solution. with you. Foundation. Oh, oh, oh. No. Why can I not interact with you? Is this why we can't use your use you as a door? Show only modified. Show only modified. Yeah, that's considered metal, that's considered rock. Alright. components. Spheres 1 and 2. I seem to have found them. Construction graph. Parent. Wait, wait. Okay, yeah, that's got the parent. So, what's going on? Wherefore art thou, door frame? All right. Static mesh. Spheres. So are these supposed to be like collision spheres? Uh, construction script. Don't have anything. All right. Something in the base wall? No. Wall, disable placement on structure floors. Requires snapping. Placement max range. Descriptive name, wall. <laughs> KJ wall. <laughs> Alright, um... 
don't really see anything here. Hmm. Nothing that would uh, prevent me from using it. like there's no collision though. There is no collision. That's the problem. Oh, the m mesh must not have collision. Yes, the mesh does not have collision. Oh my god, that was it. Okay, so... Let's come back here. Now I know what this is for. Uh, no, I do not want to save that. Okay. Now, actually what I could do... is simply add two shapes. Actually, no. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. Static mesh. Metal. Four. Wall door frame. All right, there we are. And we call this collision mesh. Don't show modified. Because now I want to come in here and thicken this boy up. use this for collision. Let's goddamn use it for collision. should be good enough. I mean, ideally, I'd like to be able to, you know, scale in each side. You know, it's like, I want a collision component. But I don't think they have those. Alright, uh, component? Nope. Now, I might be able to, theoretically at least, take this shape in uh, collision uh, collision presets block all so this actually might be a better choice because here I can actually make it you know fit correctly Move it 
this way. It actually needs to come back out a bit. Clip the that a little bit. You know, that's actually almost perfect. Let's go with that. How's this? Um Maybe just a tiny bit. I mean, I suppose I could probably also make it the, you know, a lot uh, more accurate. <laughs> this would be a reason why to, to uh, you know, modify the uh, the mesh. Just copy it and fix it. But as it is, I think this will be sufficient. All right. Collision box one. Collision box two. Good. Hmm. Pardon me. Okay. Let's see if maybe this works. Ooh, got a nice frame right now. Let's be hopeful. Take 4052. Hey, yay. Okay, and Doorways do not snap. But hey, we fixed the first issue. Actually, here's a question Block all or block all dynamic? Probably block all dynamic. Block all dynamic. Block all dynamic. Oh, it's at the very top. Alright, that's the block me. Alright, how's that health doing? Oh, pretty good. these up. Okay, so here's a question. Is it the door? Or the door frame? My guess would be the door frame. Not the door. And my logic for that being that uh, the Adobe door works there. So it not working there, it's a bit telling. Yeah, I can't get any door to snap to these guys. Alright, 
I might have to stop and compile for the door frame to update with the dynamic one, which might be what's causing the issue. All right. Actually, let me double check this on, uh, yeah, block all dynamic. So, well, if this doesn't work, then I'm going to do a, uh, I'm going to create, uh, I'm going to copy the, the walls and create a goddamn paradise. Full of love monkeys and rabbits. Why the monkeys? To serve the rabbits. I mean, someone's got to bring them umbrellas. All right, I can replace that, but I can't replace that. So, probably more than likely whatever it is, is still worked. All right. Okay, so yeah, I cannot set up doors here. Set up those doors. All right. I don't know. Maybe the collisions were the wrong idea. Physical material rock. Do I need to set up these with the physical material? Can ever affect navigation. Yes. Yes. Object layer for lighting is two on those. Uh, don't ever need it here. Yeah, visible and hidden in-game. All right. So those are... Those are fine. So what the heck is going on here? Ah. Uh. So, whatever's going on here also needs to go on here. Uh, physical material rock, you know, maybe that has it, and, you know, dynamic, blocked all the dynamics. Do we need to force dynamic physics or anything? Uh, physics, auto weld, start awake. Stay awake, simulate, uh, yeah. enable gravity, override walkable slope. Okay, that's unchanged. Increase walking slope to 60. Increase walking slope, 60. Sleep family, normal, normal, okay. Center of mass. Okay.
Yeah, that, that should work. I mean, I can interact with this guy. I can always pick him up, but yeah, I can't put a new one down. Uh, I feel like this is, you know, just doing more harm than good. So what we're going to do is copy this into our mod. And I have a bad feeling like we're going to have to do this to multiple things. All right. Copy here. We'll rename it just so it uh, is clear when anyone's happening to be using them. You know, going through the source. <sighs> We're not using a default one model. We're using our model. I'm going to get rid of these boxes. Oh, stop. Get rid of delete, delete. Switch that. Let's go to defaults to that model. And this model, we're going to come in and generate auto convex uh, max holes. Let's max this out. Hit apply. What do we get? Number of primitives, 24. Why am I not seeing them? Oh, bird colors. Interesting. collision. Alright, let's try just a simple box. Alright. That's good, except I need to get through the box in the middle. Alright, uh... Okay. All right. Remove all collision. Okay. So. Static mesh. Uh, use simple as complex. Use complex as simple. Okay. I doubt that will work, but let's, uh...
All right. Let's make sure that we can actually interact with it. Nope. It has no collision. So, we'll come back here. Do simple as complex. All right, convert boxes to convex. All right. Uh, I'm really kind of concerned that it won't show me. Copy collision from static mode. Select a valid static mesh. Alright. And my headset is saying it's not happy. Double-sided geometry? Apply? No? Remove collisions. Well, the easiest thing to do is just add a box. Scale it down. Move it over for one. And we can kind of shrink it just a little bit. It doesn't have to be exact. Duplicate. Looks like it'll do. Save that. Compile. Did this not compile and save? Nobody wants to go to bed. Who wants to sleep? Oh, wait, everybody. Alright. And yes, I can replace too. So, what the hell was going on earlier? And why didn't they just add, you know. Add collision. I mean, that seems like it was the more effect e efficient system. All right. All right. I'd love to be able to swap up the audio when the, uh, <laughs> the design changes. Okay, so the walls... Alright, that looks good. Now we gotta uh, fix up the, uh, the other doors. 
All right, so where do we leave off? 505. That's more Adobe doors. Yeah, that's that's good. I need. That. All right, 506. 507. 508. Actually, 500 and 502. stone and since I know the uh, tech won't actually work oh wait do I have stone already no I don't huh. uh, four okay Make sure that these adobe doors work and look good in everyone. Okay. So close, 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 close. Ah. Let's save everything. The ocean bog. Light. Oh, what fresh hell is this? What am I checking out now? Looks like everything. Okay, so Adobe door. It doesn't look that bad. We could probably easily, you know, scale it up. in these ones. Doesn't quite work there. Looks pretty good in stone and metal. It's just on the Adobe it's actually kind of sucky. So do I focus it on the on that or do I write a little code to fix it? I might be able to write a little code to fix it. All 
Alright, go to door. Is valid snap point to or snap point from? Um, server handled uh, next command is allowed to build, get use multiple entries. We are going to have to get into that. So we can make it look different. Is place, BP's place structure. That might be the one to do. Hmm. I'm just looking at functions right now. Override target location. Override snap two. Override placement rotation. Override reason can't build string. <laughs> Your mama. Um, is allowed to build, execute, impact effect, handle, structure, enabled. Begin preview. Uh, override UI location. Ooh! Being able to override the UI location, put it in the center of the door. Centered client do not use. Oh no, client do multi use. Check for errors. And attach root component. Um, override target location? Okay, so for this, we're definitely going to have to stop. But I am liking pretty much most of where this is. It's just for the Adobe one. I think it needs to be just shrunk a little bit. And the Adobe do Actually. Um... I need coming here at primal data add the tech wall and the tech and the Adobe wall and then make sure that they actually match up now for the most part I think uh, most of these uh, walls are actually I, I think most of these doors are actually fine it's just the Adobe one that needs a little TLC and maybe the glass one now, hopefully, the uh, override will let us, uh, you know, do some stuff. But for that, let's come in here, down to the bottom, down, down, down. All right, duplicate. Find the tech door. We want the tech wall because the tech wall is going to have the. Uh, the Adobe thing we need. Alright, now go to Adobe, find the Adobe wall. There. Alright, so... Let's add the Adobe wall. 514 and 515 which is the tech wall now oh now I'm encumbered that makes sense I've got a bunch of shit I don't need let's come over here where uh, ah and just had some spoiled stuff I don't think I need the doors anymore. 
I'm not going to need these walls. I need that, though. Go to Adobe, because this is actually my. Uh... Oh. <laughs> okay. The. Uh... The door is still there. I think I need to double check that. Alright. That's not right. So, if I place it correctly, it's being placed backwards. Okay. Adobe Wall to the rescue! There we go. So, these should be identical with that one exception. Now, this wall. That is interesting. That is interesting. Okay, so... I think I might have to push these out. Okay, so the tech wall is actually wrong. So, alright. Um, this would be... That way? No. There we go. Okay, so... That looks like it's pretty good. And it slightly matches up with that. If I were to get these to match, though, uh, you know what? Oh, wow. The collision for this is not good. But, matches there. Actually, that matches pretty dang well. Alright, um... Okay, so I think I need to bring the doorway frame back. Oh, it's at eight. Let's bring that to six. All right, that's better. Here's the problem. Look at that. That lines up perfectly. And yet there's this step up. So I might have to uh, 
add another collision node or something for the walls. I might have to break the walls out. Make my own. But, for right now, I am trying to get the doors to line up with the walls. And I feel like maybe that's just a scaling issue? Alright, what's the walls? 0.25. 1.25, I kept it. Alright. All right, that is the exact same settings as the walls. So now we can see that this actually needs to come out to one. Maybe 1 1.2, 1 1.05, 1.0, 2, 1.0, 1.03, 1.03, not 1.3, uh, 1.05, that's not too bad. A little bit of overlap, but, uh... Yeah. How does this look out here? Eh, not great, actually. I want to take it, like... Okay, now it looks like it's coming out too far on that. <sighs> there, nice, thick, chunky boy. Um, let's do 1.5. Actually, that's starting to look pretty good. Definitely a little bit too much. Let's try 1.4. Ooh, that lines up almost perfectly. How about outside? Yeah, I can do. save that and the wall and now I need to go to tech and my tech wall is right there all right variance that's it here we are Adobe So, I need to bring this out about four. Was that even the right direction? Maybe? I feel like I'm, that's not 
the right direction. All right, uh, let's say 10 in Y, but I doubt that's the right direction. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna say as far as uh, this wall goes, it's fine. I mean, there's just a little bit of overlap, but you know, I probably could fix that, but I'm not gonna. Alright, and Adobe is now too far that way. Alright, good. So that's the left right. Okay. So that's the forward backwards. Alright. That's the one I want then. Let's uh, try six. Actually, you know what? I want to compare it to an actual Adobe wall. Of course, that's also a tech wall, so... Oh yeah, that, that looks fantastic down here. How's that look inside? Eh, not bad. There's a little bit of a thickness difference there, but you know what? I'm actually happy with this. All right, how's this looking? perspective. Um, I think it's good. Okay. So, looks like all the doorways are fixed. Now we just have to uh, deal with the sizing issue with this guy. I think I... Hmm, pardon me. I am going to have to stop. And do... Some programming. So. Is valid. Get multi-use. Structure gets... Pre gets used. Refresh structured colors. Treat as foundation for snapping structure. Uh, BP plane, play die, place structure. I don't know. Would this be, uh... Uh, <laughs> BP... this one. BP place structure. Try this one. No. They're all the same. Ah. Uh, you know what? Where's override? Override placement rotation. Snap from, snap to, override target location, implement, attack, uh, 
it. Is, is this it? Alright, um... Self. Get a reference to self. Is equal. Equal object. get class get class equals uh, kj adobe go away Oh, oh, wait, 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 I'm doing this in the wrong pl place. <laughs> Oopsie! <laughs> Alright, um... Implement? For player story. Um... No... Uh, uh, build. Override, can't build. BP, check item requirements to build. Uh, okay. Uh, parent, uh, scale. BP, uh, Place on structure placement refreshed. Placed structure. Structure. Get primary snap structured parent. Class equals KJ Adobe Perfect. That's too bad. Okay, so we'll save that. Ooh, compile. It's not a scene component, therefore target must have a connection. Oh, yes. Uh, 
Oh boy. No, no, no. Right, save. And we'll set this to just straight up one for right now. We might uh, find better values later on. Let's see if this works. So much time just emptying out my inventory and then setting everything up so I can actually do my testing really bugging me. Okay. I need uh, 500. 502. 504. 506. 508. 510. 512 and that will be sufficient. Oh. I also need 505. Oopsie. There we go. Actually, let's do that one. Don't ever anticipate using that last one, but stay that. As we say on Earth, stay that. Wait, what? No! Not... not... Mm. This file. And I can't change that while we're working. There we go. And just to really test it, when it does the uh, the 1.0 scale, it's also going to print a string.
So. Alright. Hello. Yes. Perfect. So, I can do that. Oh, God, yes. So, that means... I can actually specify door scales and in truth scale of anything based on its parent type oh so that means I can offset this probably even actually you know what I'm not too happy about the scale of this There we go. Okay, so I can get rid of that print string. So the uh, final placed on uh, thing looks very simple. You have your placed, uh, your primary snap parent structure, you get its class, you make sure it's compared to the one that you're trying to uh, you know, adjust for. And if it's true, you set the scale for that item. Otherwise you set the default scale. Uh, I could actually set this up to a uh, you know, like a select on, you know, actually a select or not a select a, uh, is it select? No. Switch. Well, switch would be one option. Yeah, it's trying to cast it. All right. Uh, choose. Uh, well, actually, I could create like a little, uh, uh, enum and then do a switch on that but now nah, probably uh it's like i want to do a case or a switch or something but uh you know basically it's a whole bunch of branches i mean from here i can do you know if false and look for the next one if false look for the next one if false look for the next one and it's kind of all down and then just do any sort of changing there I need to do. Let's uh, make sure that this code works well and doesn't look weird.
We have to test all of them. Alright. Start with all this tech gear. But that gear is fantastic! No, it isn't. Not when you're trying to test stuff and you're getting all sorts of error messages from tabbing in and out. Probably could just make it that uh, I could just like straight up just build this shit in the level. Good with that. Gonna have to work on that one. That one's good. That's still good. Although it needs to be moved over. That one needs to be moved over. That probably needs to be moved over too. Alright, let's uh, work on this guy first. We'll start with the movement. This get it to work. There we go. Alright, looks like most of them are going to be okay. I think that was the thatch? Yeah, that was the thatch. Alright, wood. Wood's got to move. Alright feel set, upset that I can't modify the blueprints while having all this set up. Alright. Cancel out of this. Let's actually build this. Let's, you know, I think I can probably work with this. I might be able to work with this. Alright. KJ Foundation. Um, actually, you know what, let's remove that. Make sure the grid snap is on. Um, factor of 10? No, factor of 100. That's probably going to be closer to what we want. Okay, maybe not, maybe 50. Yeah, 50. 50 looks good. All right, so that wall. for wood. totally Muzak with this. It's absolutely perfect. Alright, 
and finally metal. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. So, the wood door frame is going to need some work. Adobe was perfectly fine. Stone. I think stone was okay. All right, let's uh, let's save. Jump in. Team zero. Hopefully, this will let me. Uh, do something. Because if I can ah, uh, okay. Uh, I was hoping that would make things quicker. Five hundred, five oh two, five oh four, five oh six. Five oh eight and five ten. Close to an enemy foundation. Huh? Ah. fine. Stone needs it. You know what? That might work for, uh, yeah, that, that'll work. So we need stone and metal. 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 So, stone and metal.
So I think it's probably okay in terms of uh, scale for these guys. But position is what's going to be key here. So set local add local offset? No. Set location? Yeah, relative location. So the position was still fine for all that, so we'll just let that go. The scale was the only issue with uh, the Adobe. So now we got to figure out positioning. So we'll start with the uh, basics for all of them. Oh, I hit, pressed the wrong button, didn't I? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. Looks like it's pretty much just yeah negative one one hundred and fifty six all right. Get the hundred in there. And I'll just start them all off with the same one. Compile and save. Oh, what the errors. Oh, this has a... <sighs> yeah, they all have targets. Thank you. Oh. Ah, there we go. Okay, so... Next thing to do is actually come back in here and delete all this. Well, actually, alternative. Can I set the team? Actor collision. No, it does not look like I can set the team. Uh, prevent basing. No. Structure ignore dying. Can be stored. 
can attach, place item, using, ignore targeting. Ignored by targeting. Ooh. Prevent cliff, prevent, uh, prevent saving, enable actor collisions, prevent. Nope, just delete. Ah. Hmm. All right. This is how I want to. Can I save this as my default? If anybody who's watching this uh, knows uh, an arc dev who can tell me this. to come over a bit. That's good. That one. And middle. Warnings? What warning? This is uh, scene component, therefore target... Me it has a connection. Well, at any rate. Okay, let's start with this one. create a notepad with this. Alright. So, wood. Now let's turn off the snap. Oh, does it look like wood needs to come closer, maybe? Yeah, I think it does. Okay, so I gotta actually set this up correctly. Alright. <laughs> I was thinking, oh, I only need to worry about one. <laughs> That new Yeah, that looks better. How's that looking on the inside? Pretty good. All right. this into the original because yeah right now I'm just making it so that you know I can I have <laughs> I have a listing it just makes sense to me and since I'm just copying and pasting this value I can just copy and paste it into here into the works as I do it 
All right, so we're reset to normal. Stone. Hmm. I think stone's just fine like that. I don't know. Does this need to come... Does the door need to come down, maybe? Eh, probably not. I'm gonna say not. Copy that, paste that into here. All right, so now for metal. too far? Yeah, I think it might be. It's still coming out a bit too far. Okay. Okay, I've got these values, and I just realized something. We need to update this also when the appearance changes. Okay. That's, what, that's doable, that's doable. All right, so we're gonna come back here, come to the graph, and we're actually going to create a new function and call this uh, setup door. We're going to add an input of parent class. Oh, come on. Parent object or no? Actually, no, I don't need that at all. Just set up door. And let's uh, come in here, cut all that, paste all this, which means now we have a whole lot more room to work with. And on BP play structure, Set up the door. Now in set up door. Now we can call this whenever we need to. Um. to set this, aren't we? Uh, make vector. Expression? No. Uh, 
Okay, um... I want to figure out a better way of doing this. Um... It's like I want to add another sub function or something. Okay, let's do this. Yeah. Uh, set scale and set location. We'll set this to be a vector. Location is valid. Uh, is valid. Oh, you know what? I can actually just set the default value. My static mesh. My little static mesh. My little static mesh. Okay, so I can just call it and it should work. I hope. Alright, set location. Oh yeah, that looks like it'll work. And then we do basically the same thing with scale. My little static mesh, get my static mesh. And let's see, I need a uh, vector input for this. Call this scale. Default value is one, one, one. I am so glad they updated some of this stuff. At least in later engines. In this one, it's still a bitch. All right. Oh, that did not take. One point O, one point O, one point O. Compile and save. There we go. I do not need to do that. Alright, so C. 
set scale and set location. So if I just compile, will this update the location? No. And that should be 61. How do you pass name of the argument? No. 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 I mean, honest, I was expecting that. Also, I would not recommend this if you don't have a whole lot of RAM. I've got 32 gigs and I'm still having problems with it. <laughs> but after my vacation, I'm going to start saving up to uh, upgrade uh, my computer a bit. Uh, I think I can do 128 gigs, but uh, I don't know if I'm going to go up that high. I'm at least going to get to 64. That should make everything run very smoothly. And I might move this RAM into my streaming computer. But it doesn't really need much RAM. I don't use it for that much. It's, you know, literally just streaming. That's it. I don't even use this as offline rendering or compiling or anything. I probably should. But, you know, these two machines generate a ton of heat, so... That's why I have my air conditioner on it. I don't know if you can hear it. Eh, it's quiet right now. Earlier, you probably heard it. Here's the, the worst part. I know there is a better way to do this. I just don't know if I can do it with this version of the engine. big thing is trying to get it so that I can reuse, uh, you know, as many functions as possible. I might actually move the, uh, uh, the sc sale, sc the scale tools up a couple of, uh, parents so that it's, you know, pretty easy to manage. Like find the one where, uh, you know, the, 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 my mesh comes from and try and put the scale and positions, uh, tools in that. But that could lead, also lead to unintended consequences once we start, like, you know, getting, like, five or six, uh, you know, tiers down. Who knows? Ah. Well, now is a good time to take a short break if you need it. I'm going to take the... I'm going to take a standing break. Ah. Seriously, one of the best investments I've made in my computer computer work time. Let me. Did I actually? I think I actually did set up. Uh, what was it? There was something. Uh, ah, yes, kits. Kit.co slash Kajasi, if you're interested. I'm uh, building up a list, but... Uh, uh, did I put it under streaming gear? I don't know. Yeah, this is all the stuff I'm using. I included my uh, my shelves units, if you want to know what those are. Here, let me uh, switch over. So we got, yeah, DeWalt yellow uh, three-tier steel garage storage shelving. It's very nice. Uh, 
you know, I use these, that's what the colors are coming from my two lights, which are these guys. Uh, I do have a key light right there. Uh, I use two stream decks. That's my mic, that's my current camera. I do want to upgrade, but uh, maybe another time. Uh, let's see. There's others. Oh, there's the accessories list, if you want to see exactly what I'm using for some of these accessories. Now, let's see, that's the streaming PC. Haven't quite, you know, got everything here that needs to be here. Um... Oh, that stuff's still here. Let's fix that. I must have forgotten to save the, the world. Save the world. So it must be gaming PC? Yes, here we are. Here's the, uh, uh, the the legs that I use. Now, I just bought like basic a basic piece of wood. Uh, technically, it's butcher block from, I think it was Home Depot. Uh, brought it home. You know, my brother helped me verithane it. Well, actually, he did it. But, uh, you know, we, we, we sanded it. We verithaned it. And it's nice. And, you know, it looks good. We attached it to the legs. And this is my stand sit desk probably for the next 10 to 12, 20 years. Possibly longer. The nice part is, worst case scenario, I can just take the, uh, the, the, the top off and, you know, it's easy to move. Same with the legs, as we could, you know, disassemble that as need, needed. So, this isn't like a static piece of, uh, you know, things. I can just, you know, stay here as long as I need to. But I highly do recommend these. These are, you know, very useful. Uh, the biggest problem I have right now is I haven't found a place to put, to, to stick the uh, controls on the underside of the table. You know, they have a spot where you're supposed to be able to do that. You know, they have uh, this, uh, let me bring this over if I can. Uh, no, I cannot. But they have this little control. It's got some screw holes on the top. So you can just, you know, adhere it or mount it to the, underside of your table so you just have the buttons right there right now it's just sitting on top of my table but that's because that's where I want it and I can just move it around and all sorts of stuff it's really nice all right so we we're working on the Adobe door yes captain it's the Adobe door Oh my. The good news is having this uh, setup uh, door uh, functionality means I can use it at, with multiple, uh, you know, functions. So like overriding the placed structure uh, when we do the uh, uh, the what's it? The appearance changes. I can, uh, I can set that up too. And I need to take a quick break to go pee. Be right back. Where's the button? Where's my FK button? Oh, there it is. Be right back.
All right, and I'm back. And it's still building the class hierarchy. <laughs> Great. Oh. Oh, it just now finished. All right, so we can call this function whenever we need to. Ah. The name of the argument that will be visible to the user, no. Oh, okay. Well, now it works. Great. All right. Set scale. One point two. One point two. I can. Alright, so the advantage of using this, although we're still doing the branching, is that it's, uh, you know, a little bit easier. And we don't need as much cluttering up this whole area. Uh, I want to do a switch. Switch on class. Hmm... Like I want to do a switch here. Ah, uh, select. But no, it really is just a series of branches. Save. Okay, so. So, wood, which is our first one. Needs that, that, and 100. I guess 100 is up and down, so bravo. I'll set scale way out here. Okay, next up is stone. Yes, stone. Which just need to go a little sideways. All right, so now we have the metal. That should do that. So we've set up the door. Now when a uh, structure is placed, we'll do that. We'll set up the door. Um, let's look up appearance. Not seeing appearance. A variant. On variant switch. 
implement that. Uh, get variants. Oh, we might have to make some changes. But you know what, that's probably not a bad thing. Yeah, we can definitely do this. Alright, um... Snap parent. Object. We'll pull that out. Oh. We need to somehow hook on the parent's variant snap, or variant. So yeah, not on variant switch. Although we are going to need that. All right. Um, let's create a new function. Uh, BP on parent variant swap. Should this be an event dispatcher? I don't know. Uh, all right. Uh, begin uh, on place structure. All right. Um, Find variant. Oh, no. On variant. Uh, no, I want to, you know, I want to bind that. How do I bind that? Um, okay. Override on pick structure pickup. On link structure destroyed. Structure destroyed. Destroy. Uh, 
force destroy. Ah, I don't know. I'm I'm hesitant about this. Uh, get multi-use entries is allowed to build. Server net exec command construct script. What am I doing here? I don't know, but there's an error. So it looks like I haven't set up quite for uh, for doors. <sighs> All right, so one of the things I'm going to have to do here is, you know, I'm going to have to cast it and then uh, see if there's an event dispatch. That's pretty much all I can do. Actually, no, I'm going to have to do that anyways. for this to work. <laughs> so, might as well uh, do something silly. Alright, where is that going? Looks like three. So, yeah, you two can share that. Alright, there we go. Now I can record the Winamp music locally, because I'm still waiting for this to do something. Huh. <sighs> I was just looking at this and realizing, hey, I don't have a... <laughs> I'm not recording my, uh, my Winamp audio in the, uh, in the other system. Yeah. Alright, so I mean, I'm recording it on uh, my streaming computer, but not on my local system. Okay, so... <laughs> I didn't want to spend this long trying to fix doors, but... Uh, I guess it's Doors Part 3 today! Uh. Alright, so the good news is more than likely uh, you know, my fix worked. And now all the doors will be in the correct locations and all that good jazz. All we have to do now is figure out how to get it to change when the parent uh, the parent appearance changes. So Let's just theorycraft this for a little bit. 
well, I don't know if it's theory crafting, but let's uh, let, let, let's kind of break this down. Um, what we need to do is uh, on placements on a structure placement, and I'm going to do this in the in the big overhead you know door class. When it's placed, we're going to make a recording of what our parent system is. We're going to say, hey, what am I being snapped to? Oh, it just came back. So we can actually try this out. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new variable of parent snapped object. We're going to make this a KJ structure base door frame. So, uh, let's see, override uh, placement. BP structure placed, implement a function for that. Get snapped or snapped. Get parent snapped structure object. Wait, is that what I just created? Yeah, I think that's what I just created. Parent. Get primary snap structure parent. There we go. Alright. Is valid. Alright, cast to KJ structure base door frame. Because this is never going to attach to anything other than a door frame. Alright, compile and save. Oh, this is going to take another five minutes, isn't it? But, now that we have that placed, that means that in every door after this, we will have a link to our parent class as a KJ, you know, built one. What we're going to do now is we're going to take our new parent object and we're going to set this up so that, uh, you know, we're going to actually go back into the structure for the door frame and create an event dispatcher. This will let us create, uh, you know, be able to bind functions to it. And uh, what it's going to be is it will buy, it will be sent off whenever the apparent, whenever the appearance is changed. Uh, you know, I could actually do this in the base file, but uh, well, actually, why not? Why not do it to the base file? I mean. First of all, this is this is only going to work with doors. Is it? Windows are technically a door. So, don't have to worry about that. Uh, what else would attach? Oh, God. If we did it to the base file, that would pave the way for swapping all attached items. Oh god, that could be wonderful or awful. Depends on how, you know... Well, it would, it would only work with parent items. So, you know, if you did it to like a, a ceiling tile, it would do it through all the connected tissue down to the foundation, whether it would go out from there. So uh, I guess it depends on who the parent of each individual item is. So it would just look at the parent every single time. It wouldn't look at the, at the siblings. But it would allow us to work with siblings. Maybe, but... Uh, that's not the scope of today's function. 
today we're just trying to get uh <laughs> we're just trying to get it that the doors will reposition themselves after you've changed a a, a, a doorway to look different i don't know if we need to make it a, a baseline thing having it available is not a terrible idea because we might find other functionality that we need to do with that uh but uh, right now, doors are pretty unique in that they, uh, they're based on the arc system rather than trying to build on our own. So, uh, yeah. Hmm. There's no reason not to do it in the, uh, at least not that I can think of, not to do it in the base file. There may be unintended consequences of that. That is the only thing I'm worried about. Because, you know, what if it ends up that, uh, you know, somehow you get a door on a wall. Or it has some other parent that you're not expecting. What do you do then? And also, what else is, uh, you know, going to... Well, no, that... In each thing, we would have to actually base it on something else. Yeah, I can't think of any reason. I, I, I am trying, and I cannot think of a single reason not to do it to the parent, except for, you know, unintended consequences. But even in edge cases, I'm having a hard time picturing how it would, how it would function, because we have to manually put in, in each class, that it binds to that uh, event dispatcher. It's not an automatic thing. So if I put that event dispatcher into the doors, for instance, uh, if I bind it in doors, then it, only the doors are going to access it. And who's to say that we don't want to use that same functionality of saying, hey, my parrot just changed its appearance. I need to do something different. I need to modify myself somehow. We could easily have that functionality needed elsewhere. Yes, check out the doors. Check out the doors. Let's save everything. Yeah, we're going to do that. And we got to check out assets. Not surprised. <laughs> I did make changes to the base doors. And this is why it takes so long, because so many different things are based on doors. Which is why I gotta be very careful when I hit the compile button now. You know, I, I got the OCD where, you know, oh, just you know, compile. Yeah, there we go. Oh, that, that'll be better. But uh, no, I gotta be careful of that. All right, so base structures. Uh, primal item structure base. Primal structure, there we are. Try get use multi entities. Add appearance menus. Yes. Let's come in here. All right. All right. Let's add an event dispatcher. Appearance change. All right, so we got the got the get use, try use, handle common misuses, uh, multi-use wheel, appearance option, set multi-use appearance, set appearance, set variant, and now I need to be able to call. Call event Kaiju despawn. What?
Let's create a new uh, output here. Appearance. Appearance changed. Oh, can't have uh, multiple return nodes. Is that what I'm seeing? Okay, that's what I'm seeing. Bastards. <laughs> ah, the upgrade system. That's actually something, you know, we're going to deal with later. Target is invalid. What? What are you talking about? There's some sort of transient thing going on. For each loop. Entities, yes. Wait, what? How? Oh, okay. So if I come back here, alright, branch, if the appearance is changed, call, who are you going to call? Ghostbusters! You damn right. Can I have another return node up here, maybe? Nope. Alright. Huh. At least we have uh, reroute nodes. You know, it could be complained that I haven't uh, done all the returns on that other one. But it should just return false. Now, structure is going to take a bit longer to uh, compile, but I feel confident in this one. Because the, the, the change wasn't that great, and you know, we're doing most of it inside this function. I mean, this is just simple logic added, you know, added in. I mean, if the appearance has changed call the appearance change you know, event. If not, just return <laughs> the value. Yeah, we're probably going to have to go return values in that uh, multi-use function. That's more than likely what's causing the problem. Why? Because screw everything else. <laughs> Why can't we just have crap? Because <laughs> we can't have a logical system, nor can we have multiple return nodes, apparently. 
This is why I'm looking forward to the Arc 2.0 dev kit. Because it will be based on Unreal Engine 5, which was uh, initially based on Unreal Engine 2.26 or something like that. Or at least is compatible with. I mean, they, they did so much good work there. It's just... Of course, the pr other problem is that they have been working on uh, Arc 2.0 for quite a while now. And uh, who knows, you know, if they've been able to update it to the engine to, you know, 5.01 or 5.02, I think is that now. <laughs> and it's probably going to be the same thing where they don't add any of the updates. <laughs> they, or maybe they're going to be uh, yeah, good little boys and girls and segment their code correctly so they don't have to, you know, pull that kind of shit anymore. And it will be easy to update the engine. But I don't think Studio Wildcard is that smart. Or at least that willing to do it. I mean, when they started, that was one thing. But, you know, now? I don't know. What the? Okay. Just seeing screenshots from the uh, ARC servers. Ah, uh, yeah, this this is the the long one. Ah, uh, all right. If I save this, and of course everything that will have to be saved with it, all the structures are going to have to be saved. Ah, uh, ooh, I just had a thought. Should I add variants to, uh, like, construct, co like, like, uh, crafting tables? Like, should I create, like, three or four variants of the smithy? So you can make it look how you want. Oh, a, a, a tech smithy table. And you have the basic wood one. Then you have like two or three that are differently, you know, styled. And you know, like you know, one of them could be tech. So you have a smithy, but it's a tech smithy. And it's not that it builds tech; it just looks tech. Ooh, that's a thought. You can unlock. Uh, new appearances by using, uh, uh, you know, by basically crafting recipes. So, like, we could create a, a recipe that unlocks a tech-looking smithy. Like, maybe it needs, uh, like, an element shard and some element dust. And a little metal. That's something to consider. And it just permanently unlocks it. For that table. I would have to basically make it an engram. In some way. In order to make it permanent. In which case, it's a brand new object. And, you know, that's not a terrible idea either. Just do it that way. And, you know, so the tech smithy would be its own engram. And the only difference is it looks tech. And we could have just the regular uh, smithy with like two or three variants. Maybe we build one up that looks like it's made out of stone, another one that's made out of metal. I don't know if I want to do like a, a, a smithicator or anything like that. That's where you have a fabricator that can be built onto your smithy. Maybe? That's a lot of work, but you know, we'll, we'll work on that when we get to actual you know, crafting tables and stuff. 
I want to get all the building stuff done first. Getting all the names right, getting you know it to work with placements, getting all their appearances working right. And if I can, I want to get it that... Uh, actually, I can, now that I... Now that I have this function, on appearance change, I can actually, uh, <laughs> oh, actually, no, there is that function that lets you, uh, you know, change things on an appearance change, but you now, now we're getting the, uh, uh, the appearance change, uh, call for, uh, you know, you know, our switching of the, the appearance, if we can get this working we might be able to switch out the stepping sound effects. I think that's a physical material setting. But we won't change, like, names or anything. We, I just want to change the sound effect. And maybe the effect of hitting it. Or should we leave the effect of hitting it the same? Because we don't want to affect its durability or anything. Or what it can be broken by. We only want to affect how it sounds. But there being a, a, you know, on appearance change, you know, blueprint thing, on variant changed. Actually, why aren't I just using that? Yeah, I don't need to modify my handle use. I just, you know, tell it to trigger whenever you know, on variant change is called. Oh, God damn it. And I'm going to have to wait another half hour for all these to get compiled. Great. All right, I'm going to get that set up, but I'm not going to compile it till after the stream once this responds, but I'm pretty certain this is going to be like half an hour of waiting. Um, here's a question. Does anybody want to see me do model work? I'm not talking about 3D modeling. I'm talking yeah, those model kits back there. Do you want to see me assemble this guy? It's a huh, master grade Zaku 2 model. model. Ooh, it's dirty on top. Ooh. But, uh, oh. uh, let's switch over to that. There we go. You know, if I open it up, there we go. Got a nice little manual, how it should look at the end. But, you know, we've got all these sprues and everything. Tons of uh, model kit parts. But would you like to come on the adventure of me building this? And, uh, you know, I would have to find a way to, like, you know, mount a camera up here looking down so you guys can see what, exactly what I'm doing. But is that something you'd be interested in? Uh... Leave, a com you know, leave me a comment, probably if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, and uh, we might do this in the future. Or if you're watching live, chat about it now. I also have a Gundam and I have a whole bunch of other model kits. We can even start with a high grade if we want. The, the sucky part's going to be doing the spray painting stuff. Although I do have a window here, but I'd rather not spray paint in this room because I sleep here. <laughs> yeah, this is my bedroom. Uh, yeah, I got a, a pretty decent sized one and you know, got enough room to come back in here, walk around, do the VR and go gug, 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 right into my, you know, cut off all my hands and the, uh, the fan blades. <laughs> nah, I've actually been wanting to remove the ceiling light for a while. Um, I want to put, you know, something up higher, kind of recessed almost, but, uh, yeah, I also still need the fan over here because, you know, my AC is over there, 
the cold air, you know, sometimes comes in through the window, but not always. And, uh, you know, this is basically what's keeping the computers and me cool while I stream. I'll tell you one thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the hardest part about actually setting this up for doing uh, model kit work would be getting enough light on my tabletop. Because it's pretty dark right now. I mean, I suppose I could, you know, turn my, you know, screens completely white and, you know, it would just flood the table. But, uh, no, I don't think uh, for streaming that would be enough light. So. Yeah, let me know if you guys want me to do any model, you know, model kit work. Could be fun. I'll just have to, uh, Set up uh, an extra light or two, and uh, probably have to steal my dad's really good camera. Try and get that set up for the stream. <laughs> I do like this camera, but you know it's not my favorite. I I'd like to get something higher res, and preferably with a 60 fr frames per second rate. Although this is 1080p, I, I would I do like it if it was 1080p 60. It's 1080p you know 30, and even then it's not a good 1080p. But it's decent. And it's lasted me as long as I've been doing streaming. Well, actually, no, it hasn't. Uh, this is my second streaming webcam. My first one was a 720p, uh, also by Logitech. I'm also looking to get away from Logitech because I can't change the settings numerically. I can do it in OBS, but I can't do it in the program that actually saves in between booting the computers. It pisses me off. The one that does is, you know, slider based, tells me no numbers, and I have to completely guess at what the values are. And even then, they're, they're, it's not really clear if, you know, the, the settings I've saved have saved, or, you know, they're just randomly out there, you know, wandering in the winds and will be gone the next time I go to try. So, yeah. Okay, this is... <laughs> Oh yeah, I, I actually have a really nice cutting mat. I think it's being, it's cutting, painting. If I do uh, model kit work, I'm definitely gonna be using that rather than my mouse pad, which you know, it is a nice mouse pad. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's Drake. <laughs> I've been considering getting a Linus Tech Tips one when I need to update, but on the other hand, I really like this one. I don't know why, I have not found any of the CIG mouse pads anywhere near good, except for the Drake ones, at least visually. I mean, I have this one, I have another one. Let me, let me see if I can find it. <laughs> let me see if I can find it. It's in the first box, box I look. You know, this is the, uh, the older Drake one before they had, you know, big logos and stuff. Uh, in terms of size, in terms of size, it's pretty much the same. This one's a lot older, it's a lot more rattier, and it's really hard to see yeah, anything on this guy. It's also kind of ratty, it's been, you know, <laughs> it's been falling apart for a while, which is why I got this new one. And I gotta say, it's actually been sticking together a lot better, but it's definitely a lot clearer you know, what it is, who it's for, all sorts of stuff. And we're still waiting for this uh, thing to compile. But that's because it's got to literally compile every, everything. <laughs> th th this is inherited by every structure that I have designed so far. I think next time I do something like this, I'm going to do one structure class, like probably stone, and you know, get that fixed and working, and then try expanding one type at a time. Not that I anticipate doing this again. Yeah, literally none of the other uh, Drake, uh, or none of the other Star Citizen giant mouse pads look appealing to me. 
I mean, they have the origin one, which is just like, oh my god, I can't see so bright white. Uh, actually, let me see if I can open them up. Alright, come on, CIG. <laughs> Move that body. Move that body. Alright, alrighty. Pledge store. And switch over here. So we're in the store. Let's look at merchandise. Okay, yeah, the Crusader one actually looks kind of interesting. Uh, you know, they, they've got uh, one for the Ion and uh, one for the uh, one for the uh, uh, the other guy. But yeah, the you got you got yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Inferno. So here's the one for the Ion. <laughs> oh, seriously, you're not gonna let me come on back up. Here's the Inferno one, which yeah, honestly, I think I like it better. But you got a nice, it, it, it's nice. It's not overly bright. Uh, it's got the Crusader logo. You, you can see some Orison. If I could afford to get one of these and I needed a replacement, this is probably the one I'd get. But uh, you know, let's see if they have any others available right now. No, it doesn't look like it. Uh, mouse. Oh yeah, here's the uh, <laughs> here's the uh, Goliath. <laughs> Origin Jump Works. It's just so white. It's just, there's no way I... And there's nothing on here I like. You know, they, they give high praise for the, the, the 100 series, which I think are complete shit. They're awful, both in design and in function. But I understand that they're a decent, you know, you know starter ship, and they do fit the Origin design. Uh, you got the M50, which, you know, is like the oldest Origin ship that really does not work anymore in terms of, you know, a single design philosophy. You got the uh, the 325, uh, I think. No, the the 850X. Then you have the 300 series, the 600, and then the 890. The 890 is a decent ship, although you can easily tell that this is not the scale. But I just don't like the amount of white on this. You know, I, I'd, I'd rather have one of these two. That has darks and whites. And of these, I think I'd go with the Inferno, although my keyboard would be covering it most of the time, which is actually a good reason for me to go for the, uh, the Airy, the Ion. Because <laughs> if you look, you know, it's literally the same image, except they swap the Ion and the Aries positions. So. But yeah, I got like a basic, uh, cutting board set up for uh, when I'm doing model work. It's just one of those green boards. Yeah, this is literally going to take the rest of the stream, probably, to compile. So. <laughs> yeah, I've been chatting for so long, I think I'm just going to st stop the stream here. Because I don't know how much longer this is going to take. So let's just, uh, let's just call it there. Uh, thank you all for coming. This has been a lot of fun. I am definitely going to be working on this after the stream. Um, uh, along with probably some other things. But, uh, yeah. I want to get this up and going. I'm going to see if I can't get this going, uh, running. Hopefully, you know, I won't have to do another Doors stream. Uh, I just want to get the Doors done. <laughs> and then I can test the windows, and then I can test, uh, the gates. But that I might do as a stream. I also got to find out how to, you know, create the, the, the base structure. The one that, you know, lets you say, press F1 for this function. There's got to be a way. There's got to be. Because I, I don't want to accept that they have that hard-coded into the engine. Because if so, that's really sucky for anyone who wants to, uh, uh, you know, work on this. Because they, you know, if they could load up theirs on, you know, them for sort of quick and easy testing, that would be great. Uh, but, you know, we'll find out. 
Thank you all for joining me. I will see you tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time for Star Citizen Sunday. Yes, we are doing Star Citizen this Sunday, even though we just had a week of Star Citizen for far too long. It's still good to get back in now. I think I actually might want to do some uh, space mining. Or maybe la you know, land-based mining. We haven't done that in a while. Either way, we're going to use a spaceship. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we might do that. Might do some uh, bounty hunting. We'll just see what, where the winds take us. Until then, good night. Don't forget to like and subscribe on YouTube. Bye.